on today's episode of the Angle of Attack show. Clear blue skies, my pregnant wife, fall colors, a challenging approach, and a $100 hamburger. My home, Alaska, is also home to some of the last true aviators. My mission? Grow as an aviator through flying with my neighbors and friends in the backcountry and beyond. At times I'll strike out on my own, even outside the 49th state, seeking new experiences, growing skills, staying sharp, and practicing safety. Jump aboard and ride along in this, another chapter of my aviation story. The time has really flown by this summer, as you can see with some of the adventures that we've already done. But as the summer months wind down and we're getting into the fall, this beautiful day that we had, Chelsea and I wanted to take advantage of the great weather and go up to a place called Cooper Landing, which is nearby where we live. I'm with Chris the Aviator <laughs> on another whirlwind adventure. Chris, how do you feel? I am pumped and ready to go. Actually, not quite ready. Still got a few things to do. Yeah, like snacks. Yes, snacks. <laughs> While we're eager to get on the road, it's an important time to make sure that all the fuel calculations and flight planning and everything with the airplane is ready to go before we commit ourselves to the air. So we took our time doing that, getting the airplane fueled up and just preparing every little detail so that we could be comfortable and enjoy this trip while having the safety margin in that we needed. So today we're going to go to Cooper Landing and we're going to be weaving up through some valleys and some glaciers on the way. Cooper Landing is a little gravel strip surrounded by trees. We do need to be a little bit cautious. I talked to some people locally that have been there before and they gave me a couple tips on what to do and how to get in and out of there. The winds will be a little tricky. We'll have to keep an eye out for that. So it's a very calm day, very great day to fly. We'll still be on our toes. So as you guys know, Chelsea is expecting and she is just so excited about having this baby, as am I. She has a gorgeous pregnant body, but it's a little hard to get in and out of the airplane. And of course, she's always in such great spirits about traveling, being large with a child. So this would be an interesting little trip where she's definitely more pregnant now than she was in previous flying adventures, but always up for the trip. Can I, can I scoot my seat up? Yes, of course. And how do I do that? All nestled in, it was time to start up and head out on our journey. I want traffic, that's the 169 are on the roll, 22, Elephant here. Of course, I've already gone through all of my pre-fight checklists, so here we are now taking the runway. But all things aren't done. I have to check my engine instruments as we push up to the highest power of the flight so far. And then as we lift off, I make corrections with the flight controls to make sure that we stay right over the runway and track that center line so that if there was an emergency, I could use the available runway to put down and stop. Once we're out of runway, I have limited options and I have to go straight ahead here for the first several hundred feet. And then as we climb even higher, then our options open up to maybe turn back to the airport. Homer traffic 169 are currently left cross on runway 22. We'll be departing on the downwind to the east. Honor member 169 I will activate your flight plan. Give us a pilot report when you can. Thanks, 169 er And with that, Homer we are climbing out of Homer, hotel, well on our way to Cooper Landing and enjoying all the sights around us. Man, there are so many otters down there. Really? Where did all those otters go? Where did all the otters go? Long time floating. Where did all the otters go? Long time ago. Where have all the otters gone? Boats have taken them, everyone. Oh, when will they ever learn? Oh, when will they ever learn? <laughs> Good job with that camera, girl. Thank you, boy. 
But really, we couldn't contain ourselves. We just kept saying how pretty it was. Pretty, pretty day. Water looks so cool from up here. Man, it's so beautiful. Yeah, it's a great day. Here's Bear Cove. Look how beautiful it looks. Man, pretty. Really pretty. And look at the view. Oh my gosh. Nito Toledo. Yeah, really Nito. This is the way to explore Alaska, gosh. Chelsea isn't a pilot, but she stays curious about how the flight all comes together. During your interview, you were talking about Cooper Landing. I just don't know if you just make stuff up, if you know it, or if you read it online. So here, I'll show you. So I told you about the airport facility directory. So even for little private airports, they have all the information in, in this airport facility directory, AFD. So there's an actual drawing of it that shows you where the trees are, where the runway is, where the wind socks are. And so you can get a really good idea of what's in the area and what the challenges are. So it's 2200 feet by 60 feet. Over the hill. And then you get other information here, here, like actual lat long information about the airport, if there are any soft spots on the runway, um, very specific information about that airport. So it, it is very helpful to just go through here and get all that. So that is something you do as part of pre-flight planning. You go through all that information, make sure you're good to go. Um, and then obviously, I plan my fuel, I plan the route, all that sort of stuff. File the flight plan, open the flight plan bunch of little things. I wasn't just BSing. In Homer, we have a hydroelectric dam which is nearby, and Chelsea had never seen it before. Uh, just There's the dam road and the dam lake. Hey, you stop that. In the, in the dam mountains. Stop that. And don't forget the wildlife. There's like a couple white things down there. I think they might be mountain goats. Yeah. I definitely think so. Cool. Oh yeah, I see a goat down there. Do you? Oh yeah, for sure. It's down there right where the shadow is. Right I below it. I can't see any shadows. Okay. So. Oh, quite a few goats back up in here. As we were about to round the corner to go into a canyon to the airport, we noticed fog covering the valley. Well, if things don't work out, we might have to pull a mulligan and go to uh, Old Otten or something. Okay, who's mulligan? I don't know, but we're going to pull in, that's for sure. Pull again! I was concerned enough with what I saw that I ended up calling flight service. T9 flight service, Cessna 79 or 169er. November 79 or 169er, can I read the head? Uh, Keen Eye Radio, Cessna 79 or 169er, we're on a flight plan into Cooper Landing, and we're just about over Skelac Lake. And we're wondering if you have any reports of, uh, of what the weather is like back there. Because this airport doesn't have its own weather reporting station, I called up flight service to get an update, and they told me about the weather cameras and what they were showing. Actual cameras are spread throughout Alaska to give us pilots live on the ground looks at what the weather conditions are. For 7-9er, 169-er, uh, Keen Air Radio, all I have for around Cooper Landing are the four camera views. Uh, I do not have any other weather. There's no pilot reports. Uh, don't see anything as far as any low stratus or fog in any of the dire uh, four directions of cameras that we have. So, As you can see, all is clear and things were looking really good getting into Cooper Landing. All right, 169er, we're just turning the corner here and it looks like it does stay just right over Ski Lack Lake and then uh, clears up as it uh, goes up into the valley. So I appreciate that. Thanks for the report, 169er. Now having verified that the weather was clear, we could continue on to Cooper Landing. Wow, look at this. Everything's so pretty and yellow. Gold. Yeah. Wow. I have no idea where we're at. Cooper Landing's over there. Is this Kenai Lake? Yes. Looking good, Kenai Lake. So, the airport's just around this mountain? I think it's down there. I think I see the airport. That little runway straight ahead? It's tucked back here like this. Okay. That's the road. 
The ROAD. Quartz Creek traffic, Cessna 79 or 169 are currently uh, 2 to the east, 1,500, and we're going to be overpassing the field looking for the winds. A lot of people said it's like tricky right over the water. But yeah. As soon as you get over the trees, it gets better. Like once you get down in the I trees, see, yeah. Oh, I see the airport. I see the airplanes. So which way do you land from? We'll land this way, most likely. Okay. I want to see what the windsock's doing. First. Gotta go poop. Having a hard time seeing El Windsock. Okay, there it is. It's blowing. The wind looks like it's... I mean, on the water, it looks like it's coming this way. Yeah. Definitely going down that way. So that's not generally the way you'd want? No. Because then you have to take some more runway? There's Sunrise Cafe. Looks like they're open. I hope so, because I'm hungry. Quartz Creek traffic, Cessna 79er, 169er. Uh, currently circling overhead, and we're going to be making landing southbound. Now that I look back on this footage, I realized that I was so saturated with all the tasks that I had to do landing at this unfamiliar airport that I didn't really take in the beauty like I had the rest of the flight and didn't fully appreciate just how cool of an airport this is right here on the shoreline of this bright blue lake and the, the wonderful fall colors. But I did have plenty of time throughout the rest of the flight to focus on that. So now it was kind of about the mission ahead, which is a successful landing with this terrain around and the trees and getting the wind right and setting up correctly for this landing. Now I usually don't leave things unedited, but I wanted to, for the next minute or so here, leave this unedited so you can see how quickly things are happening landing at this airport and maybe some of the thought process that I was having as I was going through this. So you can see that I'm looking out the window, setting myself up for a good approach to the airport, setting up my downwind, but also being aware of the terrain off to my right hand side. Now this becomes extra challenging because the winds are swirling through this area. They're not only making Chelsea uncomfortable, but is making it fairly challenging to control the airplane. Now you don't want to, on approach to an airport like this, come in with a lot of extra speed and you certainly don't want to come in high. The trees on the end of this runway are about 50 feet tall and so I have to set up to be right on speed and drop it in at the right time, at the right place, and be on target. This is a longer runway. It is 2,000 feet long. So there is plenty of space for a Cessna 172, but it's not a time to be off on numbers and unprepared and uh, coming in with just too much energy where I'm not able to stop on this short runway. Of course, as always, I'm more committed to a go around than I am a landing, but it's all looking good from here. And as we come around on final, of course, it's a beautiful view, but this is when it gets really challenging. Now the wind here above the trees is much different than it is above the runway below the trees. So you'll notice as the airplane slides into the runway area that the performance of the airplane changes a whole lot and the bottom kind of drops out from underneath us. It's hard to see at some of these angles, but look at how challenging it is to control the airplane. Wow. Hello. Here we are. Gosh. That was pretty challenging. Yeah, it seemed challenging. Did not seem like your typical runway 2-2. Two -two. No, definitely not. Wow. That was windy. But look, down here in the trees, it's not really windy at all. Hey, Keenan Flight Service, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, November 79er, 169er on the ground at Quartz Creek. I'd like to close my flight plan, please. 79er, 1? 69er. 69er, 
Okay. There you are. I will close you out. All right. Appreciate it. Sure thing. Have a good day. Yep. Bye. Let's eat. We're ready for lunch. So the flight was really beautiful. I saw a ton of things that I've never before seen. And from an entire different perspective and view. And I had no idea where we were most of the time. What was your favorite part? Hmm. <laughs> lunch? <laughs> I'm looking forward to lunch. Baby really liked it all, I think. Show did. We might name our child Cooper. And here we are today in Cooper Landing. Interesting. It was originally my duty to get us where we were going safely, and now it's my duty to feed my pregnant wife so we'd go to the restaurant just beyond the trees on the other side. Ta-da! It smells like Christmas. Smell. How does it look like? For all pilots, we live by three key parts of our day. That's eat, sleep, and fly. Now, we'd already done the uh, eating and the flying, and now it was time for Chelsea to take a nap, being pregnant. She found herself on the shore of Kenai Lake on the beach near that bright blue water, that glacial-fed water that we saw flying in. So as our adventure for the day winds down and we've achieved our goal of coming to Cooper Landing and going to the Sunrise Cafe for lunch, I have a few moments to reflect back on the day where we've come and overall what has transpired. So just over 30 years old, my thoughts are drawn toward the start of my new family and what that'll mean here in the near future. It goes without saying, that life will completely change. That's just obvious. And I'm definitely up to that challenge. That said, it was a year or so back that Chelsea and I had an important family meeting, if you will. So at the time, I hadn't been flying a whole lot, yet my professional life was immersed in aviation. Aviation was part of our life, but we weren't really living it, if you will. There was just something missing from our overall family dynamic and certainly from the own uh, joy that I had in life. And we just knew that something kind of had to change. We needed a paradigm shift. Most importantly, of course, missing from our family 
was our child that we wanted to have. So that entire process started. But what kind of family would we be? What would we do as a family? What would we be all about? It was at that time that we decided we are a flying family. Aviation will be a normal part of our family just as is driving or going camping or some other activity. It would just be something that we do and part of our identity. It's who we are, it's what we do, it's what we know. And while aviation isn't at the center of our family per se, of course, it's really the love and the members of the family that are at the center. It is part of what makes us, us. This was another Alaskan adventure and memory for us to store away. We grew closer together as a couple, just as our babe was growing inside, traveling several thousand feet above the ground in a land that we call home. And it's all thanks to aviation. A big thanks to Chelsea for the amazing camera work and keeping the baby safe in the oven. Also, my good friend Mike Rushforth for the fitting music. Join us on our next adventure. Sign up for email updates at angleofattack.co for exclusive sneak peeks and other extras. Do you dream of being an aviator? Start your journey today at aviatortraining.com. Check us out on social media through Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Got an aviation video project in mind? To collaborate with or hire Angle of Attack, reach out and let's talk. And thanks for coming along on this adventure, and I hope you'll join us on the next journey. Until next time, throttle on!